Hello, my FEC kids, my elementary edition. You guys are awesome. It is so good to see you. Uh, we are in our second. That's right, our second week of our Legacy Series. And uh, we're going to start off by going to God with a little bit of prayer time. Let's put our hands together and um, let's uh, bring God into this uh, message, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the things that you've done. Thank you for allowing us to have the Holy Spirit in our life, Lord. And that uh, we just can't do without you in your salvation, uh, God in your creation, and um, the Holy Spirit in uh, your guidance and counseling and, and just showing us the way, Lord. We, we are so grateful. We are so uh, much better because you're in our life. And in Jesus' mighty name, all of the elementary kids at FBC Kids said... Amen. Amen. I got a little, yeah, a little intense there for a second, but I'm so glad that you guys are here. Okay, today's story on Legacy Part 2 is that we are going to be talking about Cornelius and Peter. Yes, Peter was a disciple of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, he was probably one of Jesus' uh, most trusted disciples. He always had him with him. He was always looking for him. And he even told Peter that I'm going, you are going to be the rock in which I build my church. So he trusted him, right? But Cornelius, on the other hand, now Cornelius was a Roman captain. And the thing about at that time, like Romans didn't like Jews and Jews kind of hated the Romans, especially the soldiers, because they felt oppressed. They were oppressed. And oppressed means that you're kind of bullied and uh, treated badly and thought of as second class citizens. But one day, um, Cornelius, who was a believer in God, he did uh, worship, pray uh, to our God. Uh, he got his servants together, he got his family members together, and he prayed. And the angel of the Lord spoke to Cornelius and said that he was sending Peter to come and visit. Well, guess what? At that very same time, Peter is uh, sleeping and he has a vision of, um, of going to meet Cornelius. And so what happened was that Cornelius sent a couple of his slave or servants and those servants went all over looking for Peter. Now, when the servants found Peter, and Peter went with the servants, um, and Cornelius found out about it, he was very, very, very excited. And uh, he gathered all his family, and he gathered all his, his uh, servants, and they listened to Peter preach. But Peter talked about the love from the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit said that we should love Mary. Here's the thing, that Cornelius was a hated Roman captain, a soldier that was now inviting this Jew, this disciple of Jesus Christ into his home. Other Romans would say, e icky. Right? But Cornelius, through the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit working through uh, Peter's vision, came together and they were able to come together as a people. And they were able to learn from each other and grow from each other. I mean, think about it, guys. Um, how many people have you been afraid to approach? How many people have you been afraid to get to know because of their skin color or they might be uh, in a wheelchair or they might have special needs or they might have a different religion or, but guess what? The more we get to know people, the more that they understand and the more that they understand, the closer to having a conversation about Jesus Christ becomes. The Holy Spirit will make that Happen because the Holy Spirit wants us to love everybody, everybody. And here's what I'm gonna, 
You guys want a demonstration? Let me show you a quick demonstration, shall we? I think we shall. Now, I want to show you something that you can look at that might make you help you understand, yes? So I've got some bottles of water here, but each one of them represents the, our love or our definition of love. Now, see this awesome guy, when we're thirsty, we might think, yeah, an eight ounce bottle is good. But when you compare this to the love and the caring and the protection that is given to us, to the Holy Spirit, you know, this kind of compares to maybe like the love you would have for your friends. It's cute and it is little, but it, it, but it does the trick, right? Now, what happens if you have the love of family, like the love of mom and dad? Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit more awesome. And this represents mom and dad, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas, and very, those very, very special people in your life. It's bigger love, isn't it? Look, it's bigger love. Now, as we go through and you get older, and I know that it's probably like, ew, not a chance, you have a different, a special kind of love. Look at that fancy bottle. Oh, wow, 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 wow. You, you know what? You're going to get into a relationship. Hopefully someday God will put a, a, a husband or a wife in your life, just like your mom and dad. Because, yeah, all this is really kind of cool, but this is a special relationship that, that you have. And, yeah, so that's a kind of a cool, really cool, cool love. But then we start getting into that love of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to bring out my big macho friend here. Now, this is the kind of love that I think you would see when you have the Holy Spirit. No, just kidding. This is too little. The Holy Spirit loves us more than this. Is if I was to take the water that was inside of this big jug and pour this into a lake, still wouldn't be enough. But here's the thing, if I was to take to that lake, if that's not enough, if I was to take that lake and have that lake pour into a river, that's still not enough. That's a lot of water. But guess what? Still, it is not enough. The Holy Spirit is so big and loves us so much that even if that this was poured into a lake that was dumped into a river and then that river dumped into the ocean. Can you imagine how big that love is? Guess what? It's still not big enough to represent how big our love is that the Holy Spirit has for us. Wow, we wow, wow, wow. That's awesome. Okay, you know what? That was pretty cool. I hope that you guys got that demonstration. But here's the thing. The best way to go is to just go straight into my sword, my Bible. It protects me, not only from my enemies or the enemy, but also protects me from myself. So uh, we're going to go to the sword right now. And uh, we're going to go to a lesson, shall we? I'm going to put on my... <laughs> ride my fancy peepers. And then we're gonna go. If you're following with me, we are in Acts chapter 10, verses 34. We're starting on verse 34. And it says, now you have to remember that uh, Peter was uh, summoned by the Holy Spirit to come to Cornelius because Cornelius also at the very, very same time, Cornelius got, was given a message from an angel of the Lord himself. Talk about a mind. That's that's crazy. That's just crazy. Um, but now they find themselves where Peter, Peter replies in verse 34. It says, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. What does that mean? What it means is that you and me are seeing it. I might have dark skin. You might have light skin. You might be tall and I might be short. You might be talented or I might be a good singer. That's no, never going to happen. We're all very different. But guess what? The Holy Spirit helps us to love everybody, even 
with our differences. And it says here in 35, in every nation, he expects, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. You know what? You know, I've always thought, why would I, how do I love somebody that I fear? And I don't think it's about a fear that is like horror movie, scary haunted house fear. I think it's a fear like of a respect, like when you're talking to your friends and your teacher all of a sudden looks up off of her desk and she looks you in the eye and you're like, ooh. It's called fear of respect or respect of fear and respectful fear. And so that's kind of kind of the same thing here. We 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 know when we're disappointing God and we don't want that to happen. So the Holy Spirit helps us with that. And then it says here, this is the message of good news for the people of Israel, God's chosen people, that there is peace within God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Wow, that is awesome. And you know what, guys? Um, we know that whether you are a Jew or a Gentile, Gentile means a person who doesn't believe in 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 the in the Torah or the 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 Israeli scriptures, you know, uh, you're still a child of God. All we have to do is go to God with our challenges, with our worries, and He's going to take care of us because the Holy Spirit tells us so. So it is so. So. Being that we're so close to the end, and I so want to let you get back to whatever it was you were doing, maybe sewing a button, just a lot of sews, get it? Yeah, sorry. Anyway, I'm gonna let you, I'm, I'm so glad that we had an opportunity to be together and for us to spend this time together. Guys, come and see us at FBC Kids. We're now in at the 9.30 service. We miss you. Come back and see us really soon. But for now, it is adios. Adios, my friends. Adios.